Hello and welcome to the interview here on France 24. My name is Marcus Carlson, and today we're taking a closer look at the legal merits of the case brought against Dominique Strauss-Kahn. The now former IMF chief stands accused of sexual assault in New York, but he says he's innocent. Both the prosecuting side and the defense are now preparing for what could become a lengthy legal battle. My guest today, Jamie Floyd, joins us from New York. She's a lawyer by training and she's a legal and political commentator. As a journalist, she's covered high-profile trials for Core TV and the major American network ABC. Jamie Floyd, uh, thanks very much indeed for taking the time to speak to us. Thanks for having me. Uh, let me start with this question. Uh, Dominique Toscan, he stands accused of several, uh, on several counts of uh, sexual assault and attempted rape. How strong do you think the prosecutor's case is here? Well, it's very, very early in the case. Uh, of course, we've been talking about nothing else here in New York, in the U.S., and around the world, it seems, for the better part of a week. But this is going to be, as you said in your introduction, a lengthy legal proceeding. So we're really at the very cusp of the case. It's hard to speculate about how strong the prosecution's case is. Of course, they've leaked a lot of information, and we in the press have run with it. So it seems like the prosecution has as a strong case, but we've not yet heard from a single witness. We've not yet heard from a single expert. Uh, it's too early to know how strong a case they have. We haven't heard from the victim. and We heard, haven't heard from the defendant. Uh, so I can't, I can't, I would be speculating to say. How long do you think this will take? How long will it take before the, there is a verdict? Uh, that's a great question. We have here in this country something called the right to a speedy trial. So if Mr. Strauss-Kahn decides to invoke his right, and it's the defendant's right to a speedy trial, all of this could unravel very, very quickly. Very few defendants do that, however, because you want the time to investigate, to develop your theory of the defense. And that's why we have these very long, drawn-out cases. Uh, you'll remember the O.J. Simpson trial. That took almost a year, and that went on and on and on. I doubt this will go on for quite that long, but I imagine we're looking at several months at least before we get to a verdict in this case. We have heard some details from the defense side. Storskan's lawyer has said, uh, quote, the evidence we believe is inconsistent uh, with a forcible encounter, unquote. Uh, talk us through the legal language there. What does that mean and how do you think uh, the defense is going to play this? Well, it's interesting that you say we've had some details from the defense. If you look at the coverage thus far, most of the de de details, and it's almost always the case in every uh, highly publicized uh, criminal uh, charge that's placed by any prosecution in any case, most of the details come from where? They come from law enforcement, and they come, therefore, from the prosecution side of the case. And then the defense responds, and that's what's happened here. The defense is responding in court to what the prosecution has put forward. So as you say, Mr. Brofman has made a statement in court that he doesn't think the forensic evidence is consistent with forcible encounter. That was the quote. And then the prosecution uh, and really the victim's lawyer responded to that and the press ran with what they think, what we think, I have to say we because I'm a member of the press, is the defense theory of the case that this was consensual. Now, now, that is certainly one possible defense, that there was a consensual sexual encounter. But it's not the only possible defense here. There are many possible strategies. And Mr. Brofman did not lay out a strategy. Uh, so I think, again, we in the media are engaging in a lot of speculation, and we need to wait. We need to, calmer heads must prevail in these kinds of very explosive cases. So we need to keep an open mind here. The, the, the defense uh, statement doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to argue consensual sex. No, no, no. It, it could mean uh, it could mean that perhaps, as many people in France seem to think, there was some sort of uh, a conspiracy here. It could, of course, mean that they do plan to argue consensual sex. But we've seen cases in the United States where it seems like a slam dunk for the prosecution. It seems overwhelmingly bad for the defense in the first days or weeks of a case, and then, lo and behold, it turns out that it 
that the defendant was not guilty or indeed that the defendant was innocent. Think back, I don't know if people in France followed at all something we had here called the Duke Lacrosse case where a young woman, woman who was a stripper claimed that she'd been raped by some boys in, in a fraternity house or essentially what was a fraternity house, a, a, a place where a lot of young men lived on a college campus or just off a college campus. The boys, it looked so bad for them. It was sh certainly something had happened. Three young men, their names paraded through the media for the better part of a year. It turned out that, in fact, no sexual assault had occurred at all. And the, the boys were doomed in the beginning. So we, we often jump to conclusions, not just in the press, but in the public. And it turns out that the facts are very different indeed. Now, you referred earlier to, to uh, Dominique Scorsican's uh, trial lawyer, Benjamin Brathman. Uh, who is he? Is he well yes. known in legal circles in New York? Oh, yes. He, he's well known, not just in legal circles in New York, but across the country. And I think uh, in the general public, he's represented some of the more famous criminal defendants, uh, including uh, P. Diddy, or better known now as Sean Combs, now that he's grown up. Uh, he's a very famous rap star. I think most people in France probably know him as well. Uh, he represented Plaxico Burris, who is a very well-known athlete who accidentally shot himself. He was carrying a gun that he wasn't supposed to be carrying. He represented Michael Jackson in one of his earlier uh, legal encounters, uh, so uh, and many other people, too many to name, in fact. And he's represented a lot of people who aren't so famous very, very successfully all the way to verdict. Uh, he has a good track record in court. And let me say, uh, Marcus, that criminal defendants generally lose in America. If you go all the way to trial, uh, most of the time the case uh, falters. Prosecutors don't go to trial trial. They don't take a case to verdict unless they're likely to win in our country. They settle the case if they think they're going to lose. So if Brothman gets to trial and wins in most of his cases, or many of his cases, I should say, that shows that he's a pretty darn good lawyer. And so uh, Dominique Strauss-Kahn has chosen one of the better criminal defense attorneys in the country, if not one of the best. I want to go back to something that you alluded to before. Now, some believe this could all be a setup, for instance, for political reasons uh, to get uh, Dominique strauss in, in your mind, is that a possibility at all? Well, some believe in your country, not so much in our country. It's quite fascinating. I read one uh, article that suggested, or several articles that suggest that as many as, and please correct me if I'm wrong, somewhere between 50 and 70 percent of people surveyed think that there's at least a possibility in France, uh, at least a possibility that this is a setup. Whereas here in the United States, uh, nobody seems to think this is a setup. And at the same time, we have a presumption of innocence in our country when you walk into the courtroom. Uh, and of course, there's a presumption of innocence in many European countries as well. But in our country, even though we have that written into our, our, uh, in, into our laws, you're supposed to presume innocence. Most people come into a courtroom with a presumption of guilt that has to be uh, disimbued. They have to be talked out of it by defense attorneys, even though we all are taught in school that you're supposed to presume innocence. If you ask most people here what they think about about Dominique Strauss-Kahn after about a week of coverage, they will tell you that they think he's probably guilty. Uh, do I think it's a possibility? I, as a member of the media, am not going to speculate, but I do think it is my responsibility as a member of the press to maintain an open mind, to only report the facts, and to not speculate mm -hmm. uh, about whether there was a conspiracy or about whether or not he's in fact guilty. I have a few more questions that I want to put to you, so we're going to have to move along uh, quite quickly from, from here on. Now, th th there's been outrage here in France uh, about Strauss-Kahn's so-called uh, perp walk when he w was led in handcuffs in, oh, in front yes. of cameras. Uh, yes. Was that really necessary? Did the police not have a choice not no. to do that? Yeah. That's a question yeah. that a lot of people this side of the Atlantic are, are, are asking. I'll answer it very quickly. I know in France there's a specific law against it. I wish there were a law here against it. It's completely at the discretion of the police in the United States, and they do it at their discretion. They do it in high-profile cases, and your, your countrymen are correct, men and women are correct. They did it because this is a high-profile case, and they want it to be seen with Strauss-Kahn in handcuffs. And I think it's an outrage. As a former criminal defense attorney, as a constitutional lawyer, I think the perp walk should be eliminated entirely.
Now, you talked about the need for, for the media to be balanced in, in all of this. Uh, how important do you think that the, the court of public opinion, what kind of a role will it have fr from here on in? Well, uh, we have a tremendous problem, and we always have in this country, with prejudicial pretrial publicity, especially in celebrity cases, but even in cases uh, where there is no celebrity, sometimes they take on uh, a life of their own. Um, but I also think we have an incredibly uh, fair system of justice. Somehow, once those jurors get in the box, they manage to filter out, I think because of great lawyers like Ben Brothman and good judges, uh, a lot of that uh, pretrial publicity. The reason it matters is because jurors are reading the papers, they're watching the television. Every potential juror that's out there is being biased by what we put in the press. So we have to be very careful. The court of public opinion becomes ultimately the courtroom that will decide the fate of this man. And that has to do with justice for the victim also. You only want the perpetrator uh, that is in fact guilty to go to prison. We don't want to put innocent people behind bars. And in this case, we only want a victim who is telling the truth to receive justice. Jamie Floyd, it's been very interesting to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed for speaking to us today Thank here you, at France 24. And with that, we're going to wrap up the program. Thanks for watching.